Hi, I hope you can hear me okay. I'm sitting outside here, outside of my house in Florida. Another video where it's freezing cold outside, but the sun is shining and it's so beautiful that I just couldn't resist coming out here. You see, I have my jacket on. Actually, it's my husband's jacket. I just wanted to um, talk to you for a minute. I'm looking for all the parents out there or people who are getting ready to put their kid in school. That's who I'm talking to. If that's you, keep watching. If it's not, you can watch if you want. Maybe you have a cousin or a niece or somebody that's going into school and you want to be informed too. So, do you ever wonder what's happening in our school system? I, I, I didn't used to wonder, but it seems that lately I am really concerned. My children go to a public school and they're in Montessori programs, so they don't go to the school where we live, they go to a different school because it offers Montessori training, which is what I was thinking would be their best option because it gives them more choices to make on their own, they get to help each other, it teaches them like real life stuff. Not just sitting in the classroom being told what you're supposed to do and doing it. Because when we get out in the real world, we have to be free thinkers, we have to be independent, we have to know how to make choices. And if you're never given the opportunity, then you'll never know how. So I thought that would be the best choice and you know, I was hoping I made the right decision. I think I did then, however now, I'm not sure if that's the right decision. So I'm looking for something different. So I've been reading these articles. They've been coming out in our local newspaper and they're a little concerning. Um, the school system seems to be dwindling, the traditional school system. And I guess a lot of parents feel like I do. I mean, when I went to school, you just, you knew what you had to do. You just did it. You were allowed to make decisions and you got punished according to the decision you made. If it was good, bad, how severe it was, they had different levels. So you understood that if you did something wrong, it was going to come back to you. And you didn't do that again. You made a decision not to do it again because it wasn't fun. An example was, um, you might be sent to the principal's office, which nobody wanted to do. And you might actually get spanked with a wooden shoe, which happened to me more than once. But I did learn after that. That's not fun. So schools now, they expect the children to do the right thing, to make the right choices, to want to learn, to want to go to school, to be encouraged. But I'm not sure if they're old enough to know that yet, to know that something is good for them or something is bad for them. That's why they make bad choices sometimes. They haven't really developed completely to understand this. I mean, we're talking elementary school here. I mean, you know they make choices and then they make the wrong one and then they don't know why they got punished for it because they can't figure out that they made the wrong decision. So how are they expected to know to do the right thing when they don't know what the right thing is? I don't know. I think it's a catch-22. They don't have detention anymore, which I thought, you know, there's nothing wrong with detention. It's not mean. It's not hurting them. It's just giving them time to think about what they did. Nope, no detention anymore. They have now silent lunch, which means at lunchtime when you're supposed to interact with your friends and learn what they're doing and talk to them and communicate and learn communication skills, you must sit by yourself to eat. Well, I'm not sure if that's a great punishment because that's the social hour where everybody's allowed to be hanging out. Staying after school when you want to go home and play that might affect you more. They also have no recess. Okay, let's take recess. How long do they get to play recess now? I think it's like 15 minutes or 30 minutes, my daughter tells me. She's six. And she doesn't like to give up recess for anything. So when they're bad, according to the school, or they do something wrong, they get no recess. Or they didn't finish their work, in my son's case. If he doesn't finish his work, he doesn't get to go to recess. He sits at recess and works. Well, when does he get to play? Because with boys, they need to burn up the energy. So not letting him have recess, does that work? Yes, it gets him to finish his work, but then when he comes back in, he wants to play. So now he's not focusing the rest of the day and he's in trouble again and the cycle starts over. So I'm not sure if that works either. Um, so I think that either we go back to how traditional schools were run where everybody knew the rules and everybody complied or everybody, you know, you got in trouble. You cleaned off the gum off the bottom of the, the desks or 
you helped the janitors with something or you you did things that were not fun I mean really not fun sitting and silent lunch is not fun but is it a punishment think about that would you rather be a kid who goes to silent lunch and goes yeah whatever silent lunch I can handle this or would you rather them tell you hey you're scraping gum off the bottom of the desks let me tell you what you're gonna think twice about screwing up again if you're scraping gum off the bottom of the desk that's a beyond acceptable you know punishment for a child they're like oh no I don't want to do that again they don't want to do anything gross I mean I have them pick up crayon that they smeared on the, the on the tile and they're all like oh gross I'm like it's crayon and they put it there seriously so I'm thinking that we've gotten too kinder and too nicer and now the kids just they don't do anything so here back to the school system I'm reading some articles and it's saying that I'm gonna read it to you because I can't put it on the screen here one out of every 10 public school students in Palm Beach County will attend a charter school next year according to enrollment projections what is that telling you parents and children are seeking something different than they have how do you think we can fix that why don't we ask the students what they want you know they do give me a survey I'm sure you've gotten one too but these surveys um, they're multiple choice since when is a multiple choice survey really asking me what I want because I might want to put something in there that's not part of the answers there isn't a line where I can add my own description of what I want there isn't a line for me to elaborate on anything and they don't even want my name I mean some people don't want to put their name and that's okay but what if I do what if I want you to contact me what if I want to talk a little bit more about it I can't, I don't even have an option I got to the point where I'm not even filling these surveys out anymore and I don't care because I want to have a say in something and I don't feel I do I know they're gonna say join the PTA PTO whatever they call it nowadays when I was little it was PTA now it's PTO I think I did join the PTO I clipped uh, box tops for them I counted them I packaged them I did this I did that I did all the things I can do at home but I don't feel like there's an involvement here okay so what am I doing I'm helping the school collect more money that they can waste on more things one year I do have to give them credit one year they did buy headsets for all the children to practice um, math and reading and stuff for the computers and I thought that was awesome but a lot of times they're using it for volunteer breakfasts and things that I don't even feel is part of the school system a volunteer breakfast I volunteer my time to help the school not so I can get a free breakfast I don't I don't agree with that so they already have 48 charter schools in my county Palm Beach County 48 and they want to add 31 more 31 more applied to be charter schools they wouldn't be applying if there wasn't kids already in the 48 so something's going different these charter schools are pretty awesome they're run by a company so it'd be like you going to work because I believe that students are actually employees so when my kids go to school I tell them this is your job your job is to be a student your job is to do the very best your job is to not get fired because in the real world if you don't do what you're given to do your task no matter if you work for yourself or you work for someone else or whatever you're are gonna get fired do you want to get fired I don't want to get fired so maybe you should do your job so this is the same thing the kids are going to work but they're going to work as a student so the charter schools are run by a company which knows how to run a business doesn't this make sense the school system when they do anything they have to have 500 people involved in one decision-making they can't just have one person deciding something so the charter schools run as a business people make decisions they might have a board but I don't think it's 25 people I have six seven people maybe making a decision and that's the way it is and if you don't like it too bad go somewhere else okay plus they offer they think outside the box the charter school that I currently am interested in offers gender classrooms they say that boys learn different 
than girls. I believe that's completely true. And so they gear their classrooms to help boys succeed the way boys learn and girls succeed the way girls learn. Now, for fun programs like pottery and chess and things that they actually offer, they are integrated. So the girls and the boys do this together. It's only the core classroom um, courses that are separate. And I find that interesting. So someone did some research on this and discovered that this is how the kids learn. Why does it that the county can't do this with all the money brought in? And I'm not complaining about paying taxes. I pay taxes, so do you, everybody else does. But the money they bring in is astronomical. They can't figure out how to make the students happy and make them want to learn? Come on, I don't believe that. I believe they're wasteful. So here's another article. Now this will really blow your mind. They want to spend two million dollars to market and sell local parents on keeping their kids in the traditional public school. Two million dollars? Okay, hold up. Do you ever get that list on what the kid needs when you have to go to school when you're first um, for the first year? Like when you enter grade one. Here's a list of all the stuff we need. We need five pa packs of paper. We need 12 boxes of crayons. We need all of these things. This is your supply list. Okay. And then someone else gets one too. So how much stuff are they bringing in here? Well, back to when I went to school. All you did was show up. Everything else was supplied. What happened to that? I currently pay $45 per child at the beginning of the year because I find it's cheaper than me running all over town trying to find the best deal here, there, and there on all of these supplies they want, and then if you don't get the right thing, they make it clear, oh, that wasn't the right notebook. Okay, well, that's the one you're getting. One time, I even bought some hand cleaner that they wanted, and then they told me, oh, yeah, I don't know why it's still on the list, because we can't use that anymore. We get this special pump kind. It has to have this, it takes a special packet. Really? Uh, so, what, I should go to Staples and get this special packet for you? I don't think so. Just keep the hand cleaner. Do what you want. So I just got fed up and quit doing that. But if we have $2 million to spend on advertising to try to convince parents of students to stay in traditional school, couldn't this money be used to make the kids happy? Advertising doesn't help the kids. Advertising isn't helping the parents that have currently got fed up with the school system and want to go somewhere else. It isn't going to take advertising to get me back, or you back, or someone else. It's going to take change. So, how about asking the kids what they want? My child actually came up with, he wanted a drawing program, and he went and got a bunch of signatures from students, and took it to the principal, and showed them the art that the kids had been doing. And during recess, that's what they did. They got together under a tree somewhere or something, and were actually drawing and teaching each other stuff that they know. Techniques. Oh, but when I inquired, or my son inquired about it, we got a new principal and she didn't seem too excited. It was like, well, music goes more hand in hand with what we do here. So we're going to keep the music. Okay, but why can't we add art too? Because they don't get this every day. Like when I went to school, you went to music, you went to this, you did stuff every day. No, it's some kind of a, a series and it rotates. Like it might be Wednesday this week and then you get it Thursday next week or something. It rotates. So you get it like once a week. And they're on such a time structure that they're in the middle of a lesson. Oh, oh gosh, the buzzer just went off. We have to go now to math. Forget science. We're done. Go to math. Quick, hurry. Throw the book to the side. Come on. This is not how kids learn. How about some real life experience? How about a garden that they actually have a garden time set aside to do garden? Not make it the fun time that the kids are supposed to play. Make it an actual class. Or learning about the environment. Or learning about something that's real. Real life. Learning how to cook. Learning how to, you know, clean. Learning how to be organized. You know, skills that you and I would pay for to learn. Why are they not doing this? So, find out more about what I'm doing. Check out my other videos. I have some really good ones in there, and they're in. I'm not trying to bash the school system. I'm just trying to make everyone aware of what's happening. And don't come down so hard on your kid if they get in trouble a lot, because mine does. 
And I really believe that this is a 50-50 here. Yes, my kid does do things to get in trouble. And yes, the school does things too. You know, like here, he took some Pokemon cards to school. The only way I'm allowed to get them back, according to my son, is I have to have a meeting with the teacher. So they want to make sure, to ensure that I will come back for the last of the year meeting. So they're going to hold them over his head for me to come back for the meeting. But that doesn't even involve him. So if I choose to not go to the meeting, he suffers. That's not fair. Hey, what is happening in our school system? I'm Vicki Brown. My website is fighttheforcesofevil.org. Check it out and check out my YouTube channel too. See what else I have out here. Make a comment. I would love for you to put a comment down below. But make it a valuable comment. Come on, not just one word. Just elaborate. Give me something. Tell me what you think. Have a great day.